Yes, bear with me. I know, no audio. Oh, God bless America. I just got this new... Okay, so, I know it didn't work. It's cool. I'll get it fixed. Problem. My monitor went out. My main monitor that I typically use in here, uh, my front one, it went out. Pissed me off, right? Super bummer. So, no big deal. Went and got another one. No big deal. 30 bucks. Problem. Now my audio settings are jacked up. So I got to go back through and figure out the audio settings to make all that work again. And super annoying. Good news is everything else still works. So what's up, everybody? Good to see you. I'm Professor Keith. Some just call me Keith. Some call me Simp. Some call me Carolina Keith. I don't mind what you call me. You can call me whatever you want. It's cool with me. Good to see everybody. I hope everybody had a great, great weekend. It wasn't so great for the market, and most of y'all probably lost a little money. Hopefully, some of you didn't, and we're going to go over some of that tonight. So, um, if y'all could, let me know if we got good audio. Um, we can hear you, he said. Uh, okay, well, the intro might have worked for y'all, but it didn't work for my headset, which super pisses me off, because it's like annoying as hell as hell, bro, to get fixed up. So anyway, let's go through all who else here. We're going to talk about some shit tonight. I got a cool presentation lined up for you. Um, we'll get that pulled up too so you can see it. And uh, we'll go over some stuff tonight that I think it's important for everyone to talk about and everyone to learn. Uh, if you haven't done so real quick, hit the like button. We The more likes we get, the better our algorithm goes up on YouTube and the more people who come and watch, okay? Uh, and it'll be awesome. Um also, while you're there, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're going to get every video we do from now on and we won't, you won't miss anything. I don't want anybody to miss anything. I want you to catch everything we do here, okay? Now that we've said that, as you see over here on the right, everyone's talking. A lot of these guys with the wrenches are our OGs. That's our original assassins, but a lot of people in here are assassins anyway. It's good to see everybody. Who all we got? Frank, what's up? Papa Nick, early bird. What's up, brother? Gothy, yeah. The French Assassin. What's up, brother? Jeremy, good to see you, brother. Cuzzo, flight to Vegas book. See y'all there, brother. I will see you there. Let's go. What's up? Avatar, my idol. I got my drink ready, brother. Let's rock and roll. Educated Dummy, good to see you. Andrew Ianashku, good to see you. Gagleg Big, <laughs> that's a funny name every time. Pops, good to see you, brother. Big Dex, I like that name. Uh, the Mayor, good to see you. Ronan. Um... Helder Campos, that's a cool name. Night, everybody. Time to buy the dip or <laughs> that's pretty good. All the money crypto. I hear you, Shy Town. Uh, man, I don't think I've seen a CME gap since I got married. I know, right, brother? Uh, only after I rebuy the 30. <laughs> Stupid. What's the heck time and look like bloody Dow chart 76? Yeah, bro. Lots of blood. What's up, bro? Good to see you. Um, Samson Simpson, Snoop Doggy. You almost got me. I didn't say it though. <laughs> Uh, sipping on some Angel's Envy. Okay, I got some new shit tonight. Um, one of the guys sent me. Uh, this is Blackback Honey Rye. I'm going to give it a try tonight. I did have, I'm going to admit, I did have a scotch in the last class with Pepper. Me and Pepper had a uh, TA class. And uh, I might have had a drink with Pepper. And y'all just going to have to get over that. I just broke the wax. So, let's party, right? Let's have a, let's have a smell here. Ooh, that's a peppy cork. Oh, it smells good. Um, Nate Lambo, good to see you, brother. Rugsy, what's up? How, what's up? Um, good to see you, Shot Town, brother. Bernie, Manolo, Pepper, there he is. Jason R, Corey, what's up? I want to know what you think about Jimmy. <laughs> Bruce Leroy, good to up, brother. See you. Good to see you, Jimmy Monroe. Hot Water X. Ashley Vandermeer, one of the queens. Terry Brennan, good to see you. Geo. All right. Let me get this drink poured. Let's let's finish this one off first, and then I want to have some of this honey rye here because this is a, a, a Di Savino sent me this honey rye, and I want to try it. But first, we got to finish the scotch. Mm -mm -mm. I love scotch. There it goes. Down in my belly. Mm, mm, mm. Now. Let's have a bit. Or not so much of a little bit. Of uh, some honey rye. Shall we? Mm. 
It's a nice hefty drink. Put this back up for the kids. Kids saw nothing. Salute. Oh, let me try that again. Ooh, that's good. Mm, okay. Hey, that's good stuff, brother. Made it for the live stream. What's up, Peter Navarro? Crypto Elephant, what's up? All right. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about the CME gap. What is a CME gap? What does that even mean? What does it stand for? Um, it's important to know a couple things before we talk about what a CME gap is exactly, okay? Um, in the world of crypto, what we do isn't what, what most people do, okay? The, the general consensus amongst crypto is it's illegal and it's for drug dealers or it's for kids, okay? We know that not to be correct, but a lot of people don't, okay? What they don't understand is that some cryptocurrencies are exchanged and even openly traded on the futures markets. And what are the biggest futures markets? Well, the biggest futures market that there is is the CME market. What is the CME market? That's, in, that's Chicago Merchantile Exchange, okay? CME. And if you didn't know this, Chicago is very big into the futures market in general. All futures. It could be oil, natural gas, stocks, commodities, bonds, whatever. They run futures on them, okay? And it's kind of centered in Chicago, where you would have the New York Stock Exchange in New York buying and selling regular stocks or options and this kind of stuff. What you got in Chicago is futures, all right? They're very, very well known for that, okay? That being said... There are only two cryptocurrencies that are traded on the CME market. What are those two crypto markets? Those are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Sorry, folks, that's just the way it is. If you ever thought for a moment that Bitcoin is going to zero, you are so far incorrect. Okay, This is one of the only two cryptocurrencies that are well known and established by the actual United States. Okay, These are the only two. Bitcoin and Ethereum, all right? These are the only two that are traded on the futures market. It's as simple as that. What is the futures market? Well, the futures market is where you can bet on a currency to either go up or down with very high leverage. What is leverage? Well, leverage is an X number of bets on top of that regular bet. So let's say instead of betting $20 on it, you go with 2X leverage and that makes it $40 or 10X leverage, which makes it $2,000 or 5x leverage, you know what I'm saying, oh, so forth and so on. The more money you put down, the more money you can make. It also means the more money you can lose very, very rapidly. That's why it's called a futures market, and that's what liquidation is. Liquidation is when you bet on something and it goes the wrong way, and whatever money you might have had stashed away gets taken to cover your losses, okay? That's the way the futures market works. So, what is the CME gap? Well... The CME market only runs from Friday or so from Sunday at like five o'clock till Friday at five o'clock. Okay. That leaves Saturday and most of Sunday closed. The thing is, you and I both know that Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies, they continue to trade 24 7 nonstop. They never go away. We can do transactions whenever we want, three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon. Doesn't make a shit to us. Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, doesn't matter thing is the futures market closes on Friday at five o'clock. Well, what does that mean? Well, that doesn't mean Bitcoin stops. That just means that the CME chart stops. And because the CME chart stops, it can start back up later. And on the weekend, the price can move. Not only the weekends, it can be holidays as well, like a bank holiday or a federal holiday. Okay. Those days, the chart could very well move and you not even see it coming. Okay. Now, we look for these gaps all the time. Let's explain what these gaps are. Clear that out. You can see this a little better here. Tony, the motherfucking node, savage. Drink for you, brother. Only feel CME gaps only feel 87, 89% of the time on average. They do not always close. Cheers, my friends and fellow assassins. Tony is dead on the money. And we're going to talk about that right here in a second. Miss Beverly, good to see you. Oh. That's good. T-Dub Danny says, do not buy the dip. Buy the uptrend. You're damn right, brother. 20 bucks. Thank you, sir.
that's good. That's got an oak flavor to it. Um, oak and honey. It almost tastes like dark chocolate and almonds. It's kind of got that dark chocolate almond flavor to it, which is great. Um, by the way, anybody who doesn't understand on here, when you donate all this money that goes through Google and comes in, I get half of it, and then I take that half, and then we give it away. Yes, that's right, folks. We give it away. I don't just keep the money. I do plenty fine on my own. I don't need to keep this money. So I do really cool giveaways with it. Now, as you see on this chart over here, the candle started and stopped very abruptly. July 23rd to July 26th, there's a gap in the chart right here. This is the CME gap that we're referencing. This is a gap in time that the chart didn't move on the CME gap, on the CME chart, but if we flip over to Bitcoin, the exact same time, there's no gap on a regular chart like Binance. That's because Binance never closes. But that CME chart absolutely does close and then reopens. And in that time, we created a gap. Now, what Tony just said is very, very accurate. These gaps don't always close. Let's put some lines here from this point to this point. That's our current gap. Now I want you to look what happened over here. This candle came down and wicked right on this gap and then made a hammer candle. And now two candles in a row here have been green. This is an example of the gap closing. Okay. There are others examples, other examples of the gap closing. For instance, here you had a gap on closing here that actually went down, right? You had a line here and you had a line here. Now comes an interesting argument. Does this matter that it doesn't go all the way to the top? You know what? I don't think it does. I think that's close enough. I think that looking at that and seeing the sentiment that the wick came up there and got pretty close is good enough. Now, there's going to be arguments that there's other gaps in the chart, and I won't disagree. If we look back a little farther, we see more gaps. Notably, right here. There's another gap right there to right here. That's down to 26,145 on Bitcoin. Ooh, wouldn't that hurt? Would that hurt everybody's feelings if this chart came down to 26,145? What would happen to the rest of the market if that happened? Well, we don't really know, so let's not speculate that. What I can tell you is right now that Bitcoin is not a buy. In fact, it's not a confirmed anything except down and appears to be a bit of a falling knife. For that matter, I won't be buying Bitcoin until I get a confirmation. We have no confirmations yet. Okay. Is there any more cap? Any more gaps? Well, yeah. There's another one down here. At 19,000 to roughly 18,500. So you've got these two gaps right here that need to be filled. Ooh, that sucks, doesn't it? You could argue that there's another one right here, okay, around 9,800. But I would say this pretty much closed, and we actually got burned on this one way back in the day, waiting on this gap to close, and it never did, okay? I think that one's gone. I don't think that's ever going to close, okay? This one, however, at 19,000, 18,000, it's fully possible. And so is this one at 26,000. We just saw this one close. Don't discount it, okay? Two candles usually give you confirmation, correct. But what I mean by confirmation is breaking my 821 EMA and showing me, showing me a trend reversal, showing me breaking a trend line, showing me a higher high and a higher low. Until I see that, I'm not believing that the knife is done falling. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm trying to answer some questions while I go along here, okay? What's up, cowboy? Good to see you, brother. Glad you're here, too. Um, Let's see. Hi, everyone. Catching up, as always. Whew, almost showed up on time. Good to see you, Christine. Uh, hey, y'all caught the live show. What's up, Crypto Dawn? Good to see you. Um, Happy birthday, cowboy, by the way. Hey, what's up, Fiscal? Good to see you. Can we do Link? Yep, if we get a chance to, we'll do Link. Yep. But I got some things we need to talk about first. Um, So, yeah, that's CME Gaps. How often do the CME gaps close? Well, you're going to get different numbers everywhere. Um, the, the, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange doesn't even recognize gaps, first and foremost. They don't even care. All right. Um, the mathematics say roughly 82 to 86% of the time they close. That leaves a percentage of time that they don't close. Now, 
I was talking to Pepper about this before the stream. Do I want to go with the 84, 84%, 85%, or do I want to go with the 15%? I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, I'm going to go with the 85% most of the time. Why? Well, that's the best play to do. I want to go with the probabilities. I don't want to try to stick a stab in the dark on something that may fail. It sounds like a terrible idea. Why take a risk that's not necessary? I think that's a dumb play. I think taking unnecessary risks is exactly what gets people in trouble most of the time. Here, we reduce risk to make a better decision. I think playing the 14 or 15% is increasing the risk and making a worse decision. Now, that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that seems like a terrible idea to do something brash and go with the 15%. That CME gaps, that's what they mean. Why is there gaps in a 24-hour market? That's why I was explaining, Pris, um, uh, hold on, Keith, I'm not clear why the CME gap is in the, is, is the potential next low. Hold on. Uh, it's not necessarily a potential next low. It's just that these gaps close about 85% of the time. And since they close 85% of the time, you, you're to assume that they're going to close. That's why we talk about them. The reason, Pris, is the CME market closes on Friday at 5 o'clock and opens again on Sunday at 5 o'clock. That leaves a day and three quarters pretty much open. To, for the chart to move while this particular CME chart doesn't move. And it only happens on this chart, not a, not all of them. It doesn't happen on anything else but Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are the only two that are traded on the, on the CME futures market. None of the other ones are. Because of that, we don't need to worry about any of the other ones. That kind of tells you right there that Bitcoin and Ethereum are off in their own little world a bit. Okay, None of the other ones are like that, so you kind of need to keep them separate. Um... Hey, Tony, Chuck Norris's calendar goes straight from March 31st to April 2nd because no one fools Chuck Norris. <laughs> That's pretty good, bro. That's pretty good. No one fools Chuck Norris. That's great. So what am I talking about? The fallen knife here with Bitcoin. Look at this CME chart. You got this solid trend line going down right here. There's absolutely no signal at all this thing is going to break that. If you put up some indicators here, you're going to see nothing but sludge. That's a dead smack down trend. It did come down here and hit 786, as you saw the Fibonacci retracement. When I first started this, you saw the chart had that up there. Because of that, you could have tried to take a stab in the dark and catch the absolute bottom. However, nothing's confirmed. And I don't want to take unnecessary risks. So, for that matter... I'm not in right now. I'm fully in stable coins, waiting this out until I get some confirmed uptrends. No, I don't buy scams. So if you're going to ask me about scams on here, sorry, folks. I don't chart scams, and I don't give them free press. You're going to have to get free press somewhere else, but you're not going to get it from me. That's all there is to it. we got 107 people in here. What's up, everybody? Glad to see you. I'm Keith. This is the 786 Assassins, the 786 Unlimited family. This is Crypto After Dark. Why do we call it Crypto After Dark? Well, it's 1130 at night. We're talking crypto, drinking drinks, and having a good time. That's how we do it. Right there, uh, Avatar says, I used to have long leverage trades to catch CME gap wicks. There you go. Uh, what's up, JH? Said I finally caught, a, finally caught a live stream. Good to see you, brother. So has that top green gap closed? Yes, this one has. However, the bottom one has it at 26,000. There again, that could stay here and go up from here. We'll see. We don't have anything confirmed. I don't want to disprove or approve anything like that. Just start, stop and wait and see what happens. Don't want to take it farther than it needs to go. That's pretty much it for Bitcoin. I got nothing else to show you there. And because of that, it looks not good enough for me to talk about anymore. Um, can you do gold and silver? Absolutely. We can talk about metals. And that we definitely talk about metals. Used to buy the dip, but don't buy it. But but dip not no more. Good job. It's two p.m. in Australia. Day day here. Yeah, yeah. It's not two p.m. here. <laughs> Welcome to the other side of the world. Weather the storm. Oscar said exactly. Like. Mt. Matt. Good to see you, brother. He says howdy howdy y'all. Good to see you, dude. Um. All right. So let's go into what I want to talk about the lingo a little bit before we get into some other charts. All right. I got us a slide presentation to show here. I made on Google Slides. Uh, so we can talk about it, and I can kind of go through piece by piece here and explain to you what I'm talking about. All right. So 
let's go through learning the lingo. And I'm going to start doing a little bit of this on every stream, okay, to talk to you about what we say and what we mean when we say the things we say. Some people in the Discord group are asking me to do this because they have a hard time understanding what I mean when I say certain things. Well, we're going to talk about the lingo now, okay? So first off, bullish and bearish. When someone says they're bullish, what does that even mean? Well, that basically means that you have an upward sentiment or that you think the bulls are in charge. And why do we call them bulls? Well, have you ever seen a bull take his horns and smash something in the ground? Rarely. Normally, bulls hit something with their horns. They flip it up in the air, okay? So bullish means up. Bearish, a downward sentiment, typically means that bears are in charge and the chart's going to come down. You ever seen a bear throw an uppercut? No. They always claw down. AKA bearish means down. Crypto cowboy, brother, 20 bucks. You ain't got to give me no more money, dude. I know you had a hard time on Hector, so you don't got to donate no money. I thank you, though. Ooh, that's good. Hey, Trauma, living the tether life. Good to see you, uh, Rug. Um, you mean Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> I just had my first private class with Keith the other day, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it. This man knows what he's talking about. Thank you, Elmo. I'm just a simp, though. Happy birthday, cowboy. Um, we're not going to talk about Sniper's Alley yet. We'll get there in a minute. I'll put HH sometimes. What does that mean? Higher high. That means the chart previously made a high point and now has broken that point and made a new higher point a.k.a. A higher high. HL means higher low, okay? That means the chart went down at some point, then up, then it retraced back down, but it didn't go as far down as it originally went. This formed a higher low, okay? HL. Lower high. Lower high means it went up, came back down a touch, and instead of going up past it and making a higher high, it stopped short and didn't quite get there, a.k.a. a lower high. LL means lower low, a.k.a. it went down, come back up a touch, and then went down even farther, a.k.a. a falling knife. That's what lower low means. HTF, I say that all the time because I don't like saying high time frame, but that's what HTF means, high time frame, okay? High time frame being a monthly, weekly, daily chart. Low time frame, what is a low time frame? Low time frames are anything less than a day, okay? You can get down to hyper low time frames, like a five-minute chart or one-minute chart, or you can do something like four hour. Everybody loves to look at these lower time frames. And I'm going to tell you what, more often than not, it burns you. You probably shouldn't be looking at these lower time frames because they typically are less consistent and cost you money. Okay. Support. What is support? That's an area in line form. Does that mean that's a for sure thing? No, it means the area where the line is drawn and that price will likely stay above it. Not always, but likely there's a higher probability. Resistance, an area in line form that a price will likely stay below or under. Okay, pretty simple there. Sell pressure, what is sell pressure? Talk about this all the time, but that's when the wick on top of the candles are longer than the candle body with little to no wick on the bottom of the candle. We'll show some examples in a minute. Okay, just the opposite of that is buy pressure, a long wick on the bottom that is longer than the candle body. So a big long wick that's longer than the candle body with little to no wick on the top. And that represents buy pressure. Trend lines. What are trend lines? Well, a line drawn to show you all of a trend under or over it. Breaks of trend lines tend to test. I talk about this all the time. Break and hold. But let me see it. We can show you that in a minute. Linear mode. I talk about this all the time. Linear mode is when candles are to scale from the left to the right. Good for low time frames or zoomed in charts. You want to get down to low time frame and swing trade. You can do that on linear scale and that's okay. Also, it's okay for very old charts like a stock that's over 100 years old or 30 years old. It doesn't really matter if you're linear or log. It's not going to move very much. Log mode. Candles are to scale from left to right and up and down. Good for all time frames. Slightly less accurate when zoomed all the way in. That's where linear mode kind of excels. But it works great on high time frames. And this is what I personally use at least 90% of the time. Very rarely will you see me go down to linear mode. Some lingo you shouldn't use. This is probably going to piss some of y'all off. I'm sorry if I got to be the dude to do it. But you can hate me instead of hating someone else. Okay. Hoddle. 
H O D L. What's HODL mean? HODL is a very dumb thing to say, but people love to say it. HODL means hold on for dear life. H O D L. Yes. That's what HODL means. That's the strategy that people use. HODL. I'm going to HODL. The fuck are you talking about? Are you serious right now? That's your strategy? Hold on for dear life? Come on, guy. This is a made up term based on a Binance CEO typo. Yes, the guy made a typo where there was a glitch and a hack on Binance. And everyone freaked out and he said, Your funds are safe. Just hold. He screwed up and he said Safu instead of safe. And he said HODL instead of hold. So people took that term and made it into an acronym and called it HODL. An entire strategy built on this, on a typo and stupidity. And if this is you, I'm talking to you. And if this hurts your feelings, sorry. It's just the way it works. Sorry. Next, the word pump constantly. I see people saying, this coin is going to have a pump. Oh, man, buy the pump. The pump's going to happen. Stop. You sound uneducated at the minimum. Okay? The price goes up quickly. That's what pump means. This is something you won't hardly ever hear me say. Why? Because it's essentially a moon boy way of thinking. And chasing pumps will likely not yield you many games. You probably already missed when you see the thing pump. Okay? Oh, man, this chart is going to pump today. It's such an ignorant thing to say. Okay? Be smarter. The word dump. Price is going down quickly is what that means. Same context as pump. You sound just as smart by saying this. Okay? A chart going down 2 or 3% is not a dump. You've got to grow up. We're in a big boy world now. This is big boy investing. There's no time for stupidity. All right? What is a moon boy? I got that up here. That's pretty simple. This is about 90% of Twitter, 99% of Reddit. This is an uneducated investor who always expects the price to moon for no reason. And what does that mean, moon? It just means goes all the way up into the sky. Yeah, congratulations, not a real thing. And because you talk this way and act this way, we in the real world call you moon boys. We make fun of you. So don't do it anymore, and we won't call you that anymore, okay? What is a degen? Man, something I've recently started doing is, no way I'm doing that, Anna Hearts, 0% chance. I don't give scams uh, free press. What is a degen? Well, a degen is pretty simple. An investor who takes the most risk possible constantly without regard for anything. They constantly want to try to grab anything they can they think might make a dollar or two. And they keep trying to get it and keep trying to catch it. And they fail and they fail and they fail. And they keep missing and missing. And Oh, and they get one. Oh, my God, we're going to them. I've made so much money. Don't talk about the failures, though. Only talk about the one that's done really well. All right? I keep seeing people on Twitter message me wanting to talk about TA. And then I look on their profile and it says DGEN. You literally... Say DJ in your profile, and you're asking a technical analysis person for their advice. What does that say about you? What does that say about you? Okay? Think about it for a minute. Are you that kind of person? Well, then don't be. What is a shield? I, I kind of hate this term. I've used it myself a couple times. I need to stop. Likely your favorite influencer. <sighs> Awkward. That would be me. A person who constantly mentions a particular asset without any regard. Usually they want you to buy so they have a better chance of making gains or getting out. Essentially, this is all that wonderful stuff you've seen on YouTube about XRP. Oh, man. You need to go watch Digital Asset Investor. You need to go watch these other guys because, oh, man, they're telling you all this great stuff. And if you do your own research, you'll find out. Stop. Stop. You're not making any sense. You sound ridiculous. None of that matters. None of it matters. These are all people that bought really high and needed to go up so they can get their money back. Ooh, that sucks to hear, but I'm sorry that's the way it is. FUD or FUDster. This is an acronym meaning fear, uncertainty, and doubt. 
Now, I said right here, this is a low education term for many reasons that I'll explain now. Okay. Here's why I think this is a low education term. Fear. You mean to tell me that I'm trying to spread fear? What the fuck are you afraid of me for? I'm a nobody on the internet. What is there to be afraid of? The same thing if you say something to me. You're a nobody on the internet. What am I afraid of? What, what is there to be scared of? That's stupid. That's dumb. Not, you shouldn't be afraid of me and I shouldn't be afraid of you. Okay? Uncertainty. This just in, folks. If you're uncertain about an asset, you probably shouldn't have bought it to begin with. Corey said something interesting the other day. He said, take a poll amongst yourself. If the poll turns out one way and you don't like it, you probably already had the answer before you did the poll. Okay? Fair enough, and I appreciated that. That made me think for a minute. So if you're uncertain about something, you probably should have already sold it to begin with. You probably should have already sold it. Doubt. If you have doubt, you probably shouldn't be in crypto to begin with. Hey, this just in, everybody. There is zero utility in crypto right now. Zero utility in crypto. Yeah, you heard me say that shit. Yes, some people move XRP around a little bit with about a couple hundred XRP a day. Every once in a while, you can buy something with crypto. I'll admit that I've used crypto to buy stuff. It's pretty cool. I'm the under 1%. Get real. You're not doing anything special. Okay. I'm going to go over more of these. I just wanted to give you an overview of what some of them are. We're going to do some each stream. I want to talk a little bit about the lingo each time so that I can get more people educated on what some of these sayings that I say are. Um, and hopefully you guys will start to understand what I mean when I say things and understand the context of why I don't like to hear certain things like pump and dump and degen and shill. It's not cool, man. We should all be working together, not separately. And I think that hurts more people than it helps. Okay. There's my take on some lingo for you guys. We'll do more later. Just wanted to give you a chance to catch up. Now, let's pour a drink. It's 1130. Let's pour a drink. Everybody else, if you want to have a drink with me, now's the time. This is like intermission. Well, I'll kind of have a drink and then talk while I'm drinking. All right, here's what I have. That's good stuff. But let's try something else. All right, so I got, I went and bought some uh, something new that I haven't had before, but it was being promoted. And I was like, you know what? I think I'll give this a swing. Uh, this, let me get the plastic off. You know, again, I super don't, I super don't like the plastic. The wax on the liquor bottles, I think super cool. But the plastic I've never been a fan of. This is uh Jameson Black Barrel. Um, this was promoted for me <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll try it. Whatever. Um, it was a little pricey, but that's okay. But it's, uh, it's Jameson that's triple distilled and it's in charred barrels instead of regular whiskey or regular Jameson it's not just an oak barrel so I thought um let's give it a whirl let's see what, let's see what kind of bite it's got you know typically Jameson's got a little bit of kick so oh that's a good cork let's go oh, let's go all right uh-huh um, what question? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What question did I dodge? I missed it. He said, don't dodge the question, Keith. Um, BitBoy is the biggest shell. I would agree on that. It's terrible, isn't it? Uh, I bought silver with that through Coinbase and it delivered the next day, so it's getting closer. Right. I mean, there's some, there's some there, but dude, it's, it's, it's nowhere near it needs to be. Nowhere near it needs to be. What's the oak chocolate one? That's, um. That's uh, black back honey rye. Black back honey rye. I've got to get a bigger liquor table. Uh, it can be great for old fashions. I like it. Oh, okay. Love black barrel. Okay, sweet. Well, I'm going to be trying it here. Um, yeah, let me know which. Oh, oh, brother, you're not. Uh-uh. Not going to fall for it, sir. You're not getting me to do doggy coin. Sir, no, sir. Okay. Let's have some Jameson Black Barrel here. Let's see what this is about. It smells good.
damn, I picked some good liquor this time. I have another one of those. That is awesome. Holy crap. Jameson Black Barrel for the win. Dude. Um, if you're listening, Jameson, send me some more of this. Holy crap, that's good. Dude, I highly recommend this. This has got a great smooth taste and very little bite. Wow, that's good stuff. All right. Oh, it's getting hot in here. You ain't had shine in a minute, though. Better get you big boy pants on, sir. I need to. Oh, so we're talking shit. Well, hold on a moment. Just let me break out the mason jar then, shall we? Shall we have some out of the mason jar, sir? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know what? Good God Almighty! Yeah, um, go ahead and tell you right now, moonshine is not as good as James. <laughs> Jeez, holy crap! Hold on one second. Let me get a drink after that one. God Almighty! Woo! That shit will kill you, folks. <laughs> what's up bill shoulders raging bull raging beagle good to see you damn i'm sweating now jameson black is awesome yeah brother y'all gotta tell me look we got we started up we, we started a whiskey uh channel in the discord if you guys got recommendations on what you like please tag me over in the whiskey channel and i'll write them down i'll try to get some if you want to send me some that's fine i'll send you a shipping address you can send me a sample or whatever of your favorite shit and we'll drink it together i love having a good whiskey and talking it up and chopping it up with people it's awesome um Whiskey is an American tradition. You guys don't have to understand it, but that's just the way it is, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord, y'all are crazy. All right. Um, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you say? Keith, what year is a Mustang? Oh, that's a 93. It's a 93 convertible. It was a four-cylinder. Uh, everything you see on that car I've done. By the way, a little update. Um, I'm saving the money now for a garage. I'm anticipating it's going to cost me about 30 racks to build the garage. I have about 70% of that saved. So when I get the rest of the money throughout the year here, I'm hoping to be able to go over to the farm, get the dozer and clear off a big spot. Yes, I said that's how it's going to work. I have my concrete poured and get my garage put up. As soon as that happens, I'm diving back in on the Mustang. And we'll have videos for the Mustang up on the channel as well. This is not all I do, okay? Right right now it is, but my passion, my love is cars. I'll always be that way. I love cars to death. It's just the way I am, man. Um, it's a long story, and I'll talk about it one day. Um, I'm going to buy a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue for... Oh, shit, Jeremy. Let's go, bro. Uh, by the way, after the stream, we're going to talk about that, Jeremy, because I need to try to get times the same as you. We need to talk about that. Um, anyone who's interested, by the way, April... 24th weekend the assassins will all be in vegas okay some of us have already booked some of us haven't i've got some promos that i'm going to try to use we're going to have some fun times man we're going to do some cool stuff we're going to be in a poker tournament uh we're probably all going to go have dinner one night we're going to shoot the bowl party it up have a great time i'm going to try to talk to as many guys as you can i'm going to try to have as many drinks as what you with the, all you guys as i can listen Take it easy on me because I'm only one human. So if you want me to buy, if you want to buy me a drink, that's fine. But please understand I can't drink them all in one night. Else I'll happen what happened last time when I had too many too quick and I passed out on the first night. Okay. <laughs> Step dad got a red 08 stank for sale if you know anyone looking. Yeah, send me the info on it, Jeremy. I uh, thought you were going to say you saved up for the 408. Oh my God, Matt. Jesus Christ. No, haven't done it. I uh, haven't done it. Uh, 4L80Es. Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I want to do it, but I'm not there yet. Uh, like I said, it's a drag car, so it's what it is. I have a 94 Supra when you get the garage up. Holy shit, dude. You got a fucking Gen 2 Supra, and you've been holding out this whole time, Elmo? What a dick. What a dick. Yeah, Supra is one of my dream cars, but the real dream car would be a uh, uh, a 90 or 91 Acura NSX. That's my dream car. Always has been um, for a long, long, long time. Always wanted an NSX. They're so cool. 
had the closest I'll ever come to it, which was a, a 90. 91 Prelude, pretty similar colors, pretty similar look, just not worth $100,000, that's all. <laughs> so let's get into some of these charts now. Um, let's do Link first, because someone asked about Link first. And then we'll dive through all these. Link looks terrible. Um, yeah, there's nothing good about this at all. you got a lower high. It's consolidating at the bottom. Um, it is a little oversold on the daily. What about the weekly? Weekly still pointing down. Yeah, I don't see anything good here at all. It could be at a 786, 886 retest. We do have some buy pressure here. Remember I talked about buy pressure? This is what buy pressure looks like when you have a long wick on the bottom that's longer than the candle body. Okay, This represents buy pressure. If this can hold out, we could see a stall or a reversal, but there's nothing here yet for Link at all. looks really bad, honestly, right now. It's all short. Drip. Okay. I believe Drip is a Ponzi. Um, I believe Steven the Calculator Guy talked about that. By the way, I'll be doing a video with Steven the Calculator Guy tomorrow, and we'll have it out pretty soon. Uh, we're going to be chopping up, shooting the bull. That'll be tomorrow. And then uh, next week after that, I'll be having a video with Draco, who runs uh, Bourbon and Blockchain. Um, he has his own Discord group and his own website and stuff. i um, be doing that same thing with him next week after uh, after this week. So uh, chopping it up, shooting some bull, talking some whiskey, talking some other stuff. So I'm all for that kind of stuff. I'm very cool with that. Long time no see Bob Moe. Uh, what's up, Keith? Hell, long time to have you checked out XRP. No, but we can. Good to see you, brother. When's the last time I talked to you, dude? It's been a fucking minute. Dan M. Good to see you, brother. Dag. Yes, Jason R. Let's do Dag. All right. Yeah, Link, like I said, doesn't look good at all. Nothing here stands out to me. Everything's short right now. It's under all the pivots. It looks really ugly. I don't like the way this looks at all. Um, metals. Let's do metals. Let's do gold first. All right. Yeah, gold's showing out a bit here. So I put a chart on gold. Um, I forget when I did it. It was in the Discord group. I think it was a Discord group. Out of the way, we're right here at Sniper's Alley right now and R2. I expect a little bit of a pullback. Gold is very well behaved as far as technical analysis goes, especially on a higher time frame. You know, there's lower time frames. When, you, when you're trading Forex, which is where you trade gold at, uh, you know, you want to trade that down on the lower time frames. It gets super, super snappy. Um, and gold is probably the most volatile Forex pair, gold versus the dollar or whatever. So I expect this to bounce on 7, 10, 7 8, 6 here for a little bit and fail some uh, and take its time, wait on the 8 EMA here. Uh, some short-term downs will lead to long-term ups here. Uh, I still like, you know, 1865. We saw this move coming up here to 1849. I believe I put this in the Discord group. I'm not positive. Not positive. Uh, XLM, yeah, we'll do that. I have to go back and look at the Discord group and see what I put. I was really just trying to get you to say XRP. Oh, no, no, no. Bob, okay. No, it's cool. The last time, dude, uh, what we did was, uh, I, I used to be whenever I said XRP, I had to drink. Well, now it's coins that coins that, that uh, mimic themselves from dogs, if that happens. And now what we're going to do is probably change that to scams because it's not even about the dog coins anymore. It's about the scams everybody wants me to check. I'm not going to check on scams. It's not going to do it. I'm not going to give them free press which is what they need to keep going, okay? They need y'all talking about it to keep it going. I'm just not going to do it. Um, Agna Putra, good to see you. One day I will trade some XLM. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. So we talked about this. I'm pretty sure I said this was going to 786. It's done it, which is awesome. Let's see it break it now. I expect a short-term fail for long-term success here. I still like 1,862 to 1,865. But let's give it some time here, okay? It has got a bit of a trend line right here we could probably identify. Let's, let's break that right here. The MACD is really high right now. That's why I say it's a short-term down for a long-term gain. Like that, okay? Let's break this trend line. We haven't done that yet, okay? Once that breaks that trend line, that'd be great. Hasn't done it yet. Let's look at silver. That's a G. If you're asking me where I trade metals, uh, I typically trade on um, trade uh, Trader's Way for metals uh, through MetaTrader 4. Uh, and for crypto high leverage trades, I'll trade on Hugo's Way. Okay. 
um, which is another 4X platform. But it just works through MT4 as well, MetaTrader 4. Uh, at this high leverage, don't be stupid. If you can't trade right now, don't go in there expecting that you're all of a sudden going to start leverage trading and killing people and, and taking and taking names. It's not the way it works, okay? You're probably going to lose, and I don't want to see you do that. So don't go leverage trading. Until you're very, very good at regular trading, you should not be leverage trading at all. Silver here hit a 786, 886 barrier, it looks, right here from the top to the bottom. Yep, hit 786 and got rejected. It's kind of what I expect to see gold do. Looks like silver is a little bit out in front of it right now. Down to the AMA. The 21 EMA is right here at the 50 fib at 23 bucks. I expect that to happen. It's also right there when R1 is. Let's give this a bit to play out and see where it works out to. I bet that's going to happen though. Um, not short, only on low time frames. Long while, uh, long term here on metals. I'm, you know, I'm very bullish on metals. Uh, it's a hedge against inflation, and we have stupid inflation right now. And apparently, the government doesn't seem to understand that. Uh, believe it or not, yeah, we have inflation, and the government doesn't know what they're talking about. I have to go to Coin Trader for a chart on Drip. So I can find one here. Yep. All right. Yep. Drip going a bit crazy here. I think this is the correct chart. It's super overbought. Um. Again, this could be a scam, and I'm going to talk to Stephen about it a bit tomorrow. And if it is, I won't. I won't chart it anymore. This thing is super overbought. It's uh, blowing off the top right now. I would absolutely be looking to take profits on this when I could. Um, I don't care if you're taking them all, but you probably need to take some because this thing is going crazy. Um, no sale, but I would take profits. Um, let's look at DAG. Um, yeah, all right, DAG. Bit of a falling knife here on DAG. You have no uptrend. You have... All identified lower trends. In fact, you're flirting with a lower low here. You have not broken the 8 and the 21 EMA. You have bounced off of S1, but barely. You're under the pivot. That's not great. All the indicators are trending down. DAG still falling. Uh, nothing telling me yet there's a reversal here for it at all. Um, h and Sorry. I don't. If you've never been on here before, I'm going to keep it real with you, and I'm going to tell you what I think, even if it hurts your feelings. Even if it hurts my feelings, it's just the way it is, okay? Nickel, got you, brother. We'll look at nickel. Um, Yeah, we'll look at heck. Okay, thank you, Nate. I thought so, but I'm not sure, bro. I don't like to call out just scans for no reason. I like to have some backing behind it because people think I just say it for no reason, and that's not the case. You know what I mean? So, um. I'll do some more. I'll do some more digging around on it. We don't just say scam. That's not the way it works. Okay, H uh, and T is still short. There's nothing confirmed here. You flirted with oversold, but you didn't break into oversold. You came close. Close is not good enough, folks. I need to go all the way oversold, and it didn't do it. And since it didn't do it, that's not good enough. All right? H um, and T still not quite a buy yet. Um, nickel. Oh boy, yeah, look at nickel go. Nickel is used in lithium batteries um, and electric vehicles. And as you see, that's a big push on electric vehicles. The chart's going up and the sentiment has brought it with it. Um, right now, it's turned back around trying to take profits and fall back. All your indicators are starting to turn bearish. You're in the wait a minute zone on nickel. I would be very careful here. Not a buy, not a sell. You're in the wait a minute zone. AVEX. By the way, all this is not financial advice. I don't do financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. If you would like financial advice from a financial advisor, uh, I would ex I would I would ask you to go join um, one of those discords of those scams I'm talking about because legit, they are now technically financial hedge fund managers. So feel free to knock yourself out over there, everybody. Anna Hearts, I will not be charting that. Sorry, just the way it is. Uh, AVAX, still a sale under S2, under the 8 and 21 EMA. Uh, MACD, still bearish. You did go oversold and bounce a bit here, 
Well, we haven't broken the 40 line yet. The 40 line will be right around here on the RSI, right there. Need to break that line. We haven't broken it yet. Until we break it, still bearish. Um, that's still a falling knife. Um, Hector. Not the charts. Hector. Uh, Hector, big falling knife. This is uh, getting worse and worse by the day. Um, I see absolutely nothing here that tells me anything that uh, says go. Uh, it's down 45% in the last three days. I need you to wake up, everybody. This is a falling knife, and you're not making any money. Not making any money. Uh, no, Anna. Um, yeah, not a good idea at all. Um, drip, you're a part of a team. You put your money in and recruit people to be a part of the team. Earn one day and potentially more if you compound. Ah, so it sounds like a pyramid. Um, yeah, glad you found the stream exactly like he said. Let's do strong. Someone asked for that. We got a few more minutes here. We'll keep going. Okay, so what do we see here? I got this drawn out because several people have asked me about this one. So why did I draw this out the way I did? All right, so two reasons. Number one, the 8 and 21 EMA and the pivots. As you see, the pivot 821 all right here together. 8 EMA and pivot are pretty much in the same spot at around $5 and $510. We need to break and hold that. And by break and hold, I mean not just come up here and touch it. I mean close and then close another day, right? Nothing confirmed yet here on strong. This is still not a confirmed go. I know you want to buy the bottom and make a ton of money. But do you want to make sure you keep that money or do you want to lose that money? Well, the, the, the simple fact is if you're trying to buy the coins, it's still not a confirmed uptrend, okay? This is still a lower high and a lower low and trying to come back around, but it hasn't done it yet. Why did I draw out what I drew out? Well, I'll show you, okay? I pulled the Ichimoku cloud up here and you'll see. Oh, that's Bollinger Bands. Go to Ichimoku cloud. And what do we see? I drew the cloud failing. As you see, it's bouncing around the bottom of the cloud right now. It's trying to break up, break up into it. But even getting up here, it needs to come up here and close above the cloud, which is like KG was saying, roughly 570, 580, that would be above the cloud. There's three possibilities here, and two of them are bad. Number one, this thing rolls over and keeps going under the cloud and fails and falls back down here to the previous all-time high or a touch lower. Number two, it falls very rapidly. It gets very quickly rejected by the 8 and the 21 EMA and the pivot and the bottom of the cloud and fails very rapidly. Number three is... This thing rides the bottom of the cloud for a bit and fiddles around here. And instead of failing, pushes through the cloud in the, sh in the short part of the cloud right here, the very skinny part. Test this trend line and then breaks this trend line. However, that is a long way off. That's going to take a bit. And that could be off into February before that happens. The good news, this gives everybody a chance to accumulate a little bit and gain some more strong to take some profits or to make some more nodes with. I think this is going to buy us a bit of time. I don't immediately see the fast rejection happening. It could happen, but I think the trend line is going to continue to get played around with here. I think this looks to me a situation where the thing is going to move a bit sideways. It came down really fast and it needs to consolidate some. Consolidate means go sideways. It's one of those terms I didn't bring up yet. We'll talk more about that when we have another stream, okay? I don't want to cloud your mind with too much lingo because too much lingo is just going to confuse you and piss you off, okay? Um, uh, you should have sold heck a while back. Uh, it's gotten so low at this point. Um, that if you're going to sell, be very careful. Not financial advice. Um, boo or spooky swap would be great. Boo. There you go. All right. Buy the 821. You know, you got a technical early buy on spooky swap, but you don't have very much data here. Um, and it just hit trading view recently. So it gives me a little bit more faith in it, but that doesn't mean much. Um, YMC crypto. You're welcome, brother. PYR keeping it real. Thank you. Shot town. Yeah. PYR is all short. Nothing to see here. It's all short. No confirmed anything on PYR. While we're here, Ohm, 
terrible. Nothing to see at all. Wonderland, guess what, everybody? I know you want it to go up and you think it's so bullish. Oh, big falling knife. All the way from fucking 9,000 down to 850. If you haven't caught on yet that this is a terrible, terrible looking chart, then you're not paying attention, okay? Just looks awful. Nothing here is telling you to buy. It's all sell. It's all short. It's all very, very quite miserable, okay? Pay attention. FTM. Phantom actually looks good. It's one of the few that look that good, look good. All the cloud is a go, okay? If we look at the fibs, it's trying to break the 50 fib, but hasn't quite done that yet. Okay. Uh, as far as the 8 and the 21 MA goes. Yeah, under it, it's short on that, and it isn't long quite yet. It's still under this 50 fib. It needs to break and hold 250. Break and hold 250. It can move up toward two, 295 $3. Has to break and hold 50 first. 250, okay? The 50 fib, that red box right here. It hasn't done that. Until it does that, ye of little faith is me. Okay? Gala. My God. I have such bad luck with Gala. Yes, I have a Gala node. Yes, it's done me pretty well. But, damn, man. Every time I get a good bit of rewards up, this fucking chart goes the wrong way on me. So, I'm going to let it accrue for a bit. It did hit 618 and is trying to bounce, but until it breaks 25 cents, this is bad. Okay? It's going to come down to 12 cents. If it can't break... 25 cents and move up all there is to it can time ever recover well no idea bro uh where can i get the easiest 341 special indicator jason r that's in our discord group if you apply apply if you sign up right there at patreon.com forward slash carolina keith right there on the bottom you get access to our discord channel and our discord channel we have instructional videos we have custom indicator strip scripts we have node chat we have dow chat we have live charts we have Unlimited chat for the 16, uh, 16 and up members. We have eight. We have eight dollar mafia chat. We have an NFT room. We have a whiskey room. We're going to be adding a real estate room and a business room. Okay, this is for all patrons. If you're a general member, you only get general chat only. That's just the way it is. We're not going to deny anybody. We're not going to deny anybody. However, patrons get more clout. That's all there is to it. Um. Oh, you're already in there. Yeah. If you just look to the left on the uh, custom indicators you'll see it on the left are you sure they're a scam yes um absolutely anna and there's a very long explanation for it and the explanation used to be in our discord but we moved that to patreons only because all the thing ever only thing that people ever did was talk shit to me about it um there's a lot that goes into what we find when we find scams it's not just me saying things uh we do dig in and try to figure out why we say that trust me it's not just me wanting to say that. I don't like calling people that, okay? I don't like saying that there are scams out there. I don't like calling people that. But when you line up the chart, when you when, when you line things up that easy for me, I'm going to be able to call you out, okay? That's all there is to it. So listen, been an hour. This has been an, a really fast stream. This went flying by. Uh, nice on the biz chat. Thanks for listening. So listen, Thank you, doctor. Um, this has been a crazy fast hour. I appreciate everyone showing up. We're going to do this again on Thursday. Thank you all for being here. Blew right by through time. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys all on Thursday. I'll leave you with, oh, Danny Carney just posted a link for the TA classes. If anybody wants to sign up for a class, please click the link. If you can't get a class yet, just wait. I will be having more times open up soon. Thank you all for coming. Lastly, I'll leave you with this in the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G., you could have been anywhere in the world, but you decided to come here with me, and I appreciate that. Thank y'all.